Episode 50, brought to you by Trifecta and RP Strength. We have uh, we have no Ellie. This is is this the first episode without Ellie? It's a little weird. She doesn't really know we're doing this either. She's gonna freak out. Oh, yeah, okay. she's gonna be a little upset. Hi, Ellie. Hi. Sorry, Ellie. Yeah, we're sorry. This gives you something to listen to, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> actually, that's it. We'll make it entertaining. Um, I don't know if we can actually do this without Ellie, because I don't know what we're doing. Let's just wing it. We'll Let's be all right. It. We got Austin Maliolo, and we got Paul Tremblay. From Canada. Ethan Tremblay from Canada. It's our first. It's our first Canadian. I think it is. Oh, Congratulations. Oh, it's first a real Canadian. Episode honor. 50, first Canadian. Episode 50, first Canadian. Here. We got Austin. It's a real honor. <laughs> got yeah. the Notre Dame game going on in the background. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit uh, hit or miss sometimes because I'm going to be – we're almost at halftime. This isn't going so hot right now. But, Look uh, at this, Rich. Eh? Just being a host. I, I know, right? That's great. We're MC. down in Rich's man cave. We're I guess man we should cave, set yeah. the setting. Yeah, we're not, at the, we're not at the gym. We're not in the barn. Nope. We've been down here once before for a podcast with Hinshaw, but we were on the couch, and it was yeah. a little weird. We didn't so. say, it was weird, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was kind of like in your lap. It was yeah. weird. Yeah. It was awkward. So what I'm, are you guys down here for? Why are you here? Uh, I'm here for... Uh, for fitness and for fun? For fitness and fun. CrossFit Level 2 Seminar at level your gym. Level 2 Seminar, yeah. Yeah. But uh, more importantly, hanging out with my buddy. Yeah, that's right. That's it. That's right. Paul, you've been here for a week. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah, been here for <clears throat> for a week now. I helped out uh, Chris Henshaw and Facundo at the Power Monkey Camp. Power Monkey. Yeah. And um, not known for your um, aerobic capacity in no. recent years, but I guess it's a new <laughs> avenue for you. Well, his coaching is good, I though. Mean, you know? If you like, must yeah. know, we don't I, uh, just talk about the aerobic pathway. We also talk about the anaerobic pathway, and that I can speak of. <laughs> so, <laughs> you did a good job. I, it. Nah, it's good. <laughs> I got to watch. Yeah, yeah he you did know, a good to, job. I, we yeah, did a little did a like, uh, thing at Mayhem, a little field trip, and oh, yeah, that was Paul super led fun. the station. That was, that was a good time. Yeah, workout, was, workout sucked. It was, that was hard. A, it was that hard. was a great time. I think the 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 campers really enjoyed that. Yeah, we had that a good time. That was a big day. Uh, but yeah, did that all week, and uh, I'm at uh, the level two with Austin this weekend, interning under interning under yeah. the wise old sage. Austin. <laughs> How many seminars have you worked? Can you? Um, I think the last I one million. Uh, like, <laughs> like I'm, I think I'm over 350. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. So who's the most, Adrian? Yeah, so the, well, there's Boz. I th- I'm pretty oh, sure that Chuck. Chuck I'm pretty Chuck. sure Chuck Carswell. Um, Chuck and Boz. Chuck I, was mine. I re- I think that like at two or three summits ago, it's like it w- when the trainers get together, they did the count, and that was three years ago, four years ago, I think, and he was at three thirty then. Wow. So gosh. how many and, years total then for you? So this is I'm going on my tenth year wow. on the road, and in the beginning, gosh, in 2010 is when I got on staff. Yeah, end of 2009, it was very like haphazard yeah. where now it's like I'm working about 40 seminars a year wow. um, but back then it was like you'd work one it wasn't as busy but now we're we're you know gosh I know I know CrossFit puts on about 18 seminars a weekend, a weekend yeah. Wow. yeah but you don't only work level ones and level twos you do the, the uh, competitors course yeah we do the CrossFit competitors Spencer course now? yeah myself be... Spencer and then Eric O'Connor Eric O'Connor still Eric, on there okay. and Eric O'Connor wrote it with Spiel and Matt Chan Man, gotcha. yeah um, but so I kind of do the East Coast stuff, and Eric O'Connor, who lives in Park City, does. And then the are you West doing Coast. the coach development one as well? Yeah. So Denise and I wrote the coach development program, mm-hmm. and we do the coach development program, which now we just scale to a bunch of other locations. Did Josh talk to you about that, by the way? He did. Sidebar. Yes, okay. he did. He actually, <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So he's he did. wanted to do that. Bad. He's all fired up about it. He mentioned yeah. me this morning, but so we do the coach development program as well. So, yeah, level ones, level twos. Paul, how many seminars have you worked? Do you know? Uh, 55 or 56, I think. Nice. You're Look counting, you. huh? Yeah. Wow. wow. I don't know if this one counts. What level two, what, what, uh, what intern is this on you level two? Uh, my second one. Second one. Yeah. Is he going to get passed? <laughs> How many do you have to do then? What's that look like? It's whenever this guy it's, says he can go. You can go, you can go as little as two, right? I don't know about I level two. So. Level three. I don't or know. Level ones you can. Yeah. You know, I, again, for me, Really, I just evaluate his performance, and I and then I push it up the chain, and then right. the uh, the course directors kind of dictate that. I, you know, I don't have much say other than just you know passing along. But right. you know, the nice thing is, you know, when you're in the level two environment, you know, you're scoop and score. Sorry, nice. Did he make it happen? <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, done. You know, it's 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 nice because they're in, in the ecosystem, right? So right. it's it's just making sure that they, you set them up for success. But yeah. it's just a different seminar level too. I love it's probably my selfishly my favorite course like from what we do at the two day because you get people better at coaching. So right. it's just different than level one. Where level one it's a lot of info. Level two is yeah. sort of massaging the information and getting people better. 
um, in an environment that's hard. It's hard to coach in front of your peers. Yeah. Stressful. Not only your peers, but then there's just like an, uh, someone writing things down. Yeah. yeah. I was about to say, talk talk a little bit about the difference in the level one, level two, because a lot of people are you know have been probably to a level one, but yeah, have never really been to a level two. So yeah, I mean, think about the level one as just sort of a fire hose of information mm-hmm. of understanding CrossFit methodologies, its concepts, and sort of its fundamental practices. When you leave that, and you if you forget seventy percent of it, that thirty percent of you you remember will put you on the right path. Yeah. Um, the level two is it's co- it's really coaching coaches, training trainers. So it it doesn't have much place for someone who doesn't coach. It's putting if you're coaching day in and day out, you've developed good and bad habits, and we just try to ref- you know refine what's good and clean up areas of improvement, and we just break down the the fundamentals really. I think that's if there's one area that most people forget. Gosh, someone said it today. They're just like, you know, you forget the fundamentals after level one, and really, it's not much different from what we've taught at level one. We're just teaching and correcting their ability to teach and correct it. Um, and you know it's the novice's curse, right? Where they 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 jump right to the to the you know these advanced little nuanced parts and pieces of movements as opposed to just you know big picture, big ticket items. And you know so when it's done, it's super powerful because the roadmap's really clear. Whether it's from a coaching perspective or even a programming perspective, right? We see a lot of gyms out there that overprogram. They put too much stuff for in, at the affiliate level when really we understand that. We have to coach for an hour. We, we have to do a lot more. It's not just, hey, shuffle people through strength, metcon, auxiliary in an hour. Then we, 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 we actually can't display our strength with just teach, see, correct. In order to do that, you need to have time to teach and skill sessions. So, and once you just simply lay out a lesson plan, lay out some stuff on the board for them and show them, they're like, wow, this makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's really cool is that no one comes to the seminar saying, my goal is to screw my people up. <laughs> like my goal is to like really mess it up and do it wrong. People are, they try to get their people better and I think they just get lost in that pursuit and they sometimes don't have a feedback loop. And that's what the level two at the very base level, it's a mirror that can deliver feedback. And because I truly believe that everyone tries to help their community and help their people. It's just sometimes misguided because no one is giving them feedback and CrossFit is effective, implemented poorly with a poor program. That's how potent it is. So there's a, there's a beauty and a bane with that. Right. So it's like, well, my people are getting better, but you know, it's, that's not the only metric. Could we be more efficient? Could we be yeah. doing this a little better? So that's well, a level two. What do you think about level twos now that you've been actually, you know, coaching them? Uh, it's, it's a great course. I mean, I remember taking it myself, uh, in like 2014 Whew, with, I don't even remember when I took mine with Austin. Nice. Actually. Yeah. Nice. Um, really? and I remember taking it and, and getting back to my affiliate after and, I was in the same shoes as a lot of people who are taking this this seminar who are affiliate owners who have been doing something a certain way for a long time and they're still, you know, successful and they have people inside their gym. But uh, I found that after taking my level two, it just changed a lot of things for, for me and my affiliate and the right. way I was coaching, the way I was running it. So um, I, I, I don't think I'll ever forget that feeling. And that's when I'm there interning and I watch Austin and other people uh, – coaching it and I see the way that people are taking the feedback like I I still remember vividly what that felt like so that's why I think it's super it's super cool to be on the other side and being able to kind of uh deliver that myself and uh because I don't remember much from my level one to be honest like I you gave me my level one I remember the interaction I had with you but um other than that it wasn't much and but level two is very because of I think the impact that it had on me so uh, being able to now give them is, or hopefully give them, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, buddy, it's special. Yeah, I remember, I remember just watching you guys. Like I worked seminars, but not a ton. But just watching the guys and girls that worked them every weekend, it's cool to watch people that are professionals of their craft. You know, work yeah. at it. It's it's really a talent. So it's interesting from from my perspective, seeing you guys come to the gym and <laughs> I've sat around multiple times and watched the different levels. Of course, just because I'm interested in the coaching piece, and it's not even the same thing when you go one to two. Right. And the people who show up, it's, it seems like you have to slow them down a little bit, get, get, a little them, in a, up. get yeah. them a little bit different track, mm-hmm. you know. And if you're if you're worried about being scrutinized, that's a that's a huge challenge. Cause, yeah. You know, being being coached while you're trying to coach is a completely different kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, that's the that's the beauty of it is that it's you have to be able to receive feedback, and implement it. Where if you were to say, what's the most important attribute a coach can have? It's you need to have the humility to be able to receive feedback 
and then the ability to actually implement it to improve. Because if you can do that, it doesn't matter what your areas of improvement are. It means you're going to get better. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, you can teach anyone to be a good coach. Like the, the, it's not a, a skill set that, that's, you know, it's not like becoming an astronaut or anything like that. Right. It's, hey, like, but you need to be able to put it into play. Yeah. And with that, you need the humility and the ability to, you know, sometimes take one step back to take two steps forward. And I think that's, uh, that's what the level two can create. Right on. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So how many, you have one, is it just one affiliate you get, NCR? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just one gym in, uh, have, in Ottawa, Canada. Ottawa. Yeah. We have Ottawa. a podcast too, actually. You? Yeah. Nice. We started that a couple months the ago. The National Capital Region. That's right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. DNCR. So your, your hockey team? Sense. Oh, man. We Sense. just traded. Well, we just lost our best player. Yeah. Wasn't the season just start, right? Yeah, I know, but he signed with another team. He signed with with the San Jose Sharks. Uh, it's devastating. The whole city is really down. <laughs> really? <laughs> Are you, you rivaling uh, Kalipa in the number of gyms you have now? Gosh, I don't know. Probably not. I mean, te you know, technically, you know, I have Reebok CrossFit 1 and then three CrossFit 1 Nation locations. So, okay. well, do, you, do you count the ones in China? I guess on. so, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have one in Shanghai, so uh, CrossFit 1 Nation, uh, Shanghai. So, yeah, I mean, we're growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's trying uh, to catch Kalipa, huh? Gosh, he's probably got like, you know, 400 at this point. Yeah, but he's, yeah, he's, he, he's a savage. He's up there. Yeah, I mean, he's been, you know, he's sort of set the, set the tone for that stuff. And it's, uh, it's fun, but the greater Boston area, I mean, I think, uh, and now we got one with James Hobart. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. Cool. Jimmy. Yeah, we, Jimmy. So we took over CrossFit Boston, which was cool. So it's One yeah. Nation How's Boston. How's that going? How's, what's that like taking over an affiliate that, well, I mean, was it yeah. not doing so great? What was, or they just wanted out? What was yeah, the deal? Yeah, you know, I think that, you know, it's, gosh, I think CrossFit Boston was a 27th affiliate. Oh, wow. You know, so wow. it was, it's, it's been around. I think that, you know, it's owning an affiliate's a grind. Right. Um, you know, it's. I tell everyone that wants someone asked me to open up a field the other day. So find every reason not to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and if you can get through all of those answers and you you still want to, then it's probably the right choice. But most of the time, it's not. It's a hard, it's it's hard work. It's a grind. And you know, I think after ten years, I think the owner, which is great, Neil, is just he was looking for something new. And um, so we were fortunate enough to be able to come to an agreement and take it over. I mean, it was nerve wracking because you take over a community and it's uh it's just different. You know right. where you know, when you open kind of inserting yourself versus like yeah it almost feels you don't want to force it. Yeah, so you know I think that yeah, but you kind of I mean James I'm sure knew a lot of the people you knew a lot of the people uh, so it wasn't you there, had a there's overall rebrand. Right? Yeah, we yeah. rebranded and we put a lot of you know you know it's, I think another thing is you put a lot into the facility mm -hmm. to kind of show one we care we want to you know we brought it you know we brought it up we essentially you know revamp the entire inside which goes a long way and then you know james had history there was the first ever gym he worked out at which was kind of oh, okay. cool that's cool so um and he did and and we put a guy up there lachlan who runs it which is great and it's uh it's in a great location it's close to the city a lot of people live there so um it's just it's a it's a hopping location but taking cool. over a gym if i were to if i were to assume our next location it's that's the way to do it it's easier to do way easier to do and you know we we and Needham and Waltham, our first two locations, it was just so much work, so much money to, you know, buy, a, you know, you know, it's the build out, the trenching, the bathrooms. I mean, you know how oh, it yeah. is. It's, it's, it's cool. And then you're like, it's six months and we're still not open, not doing you anything. know, and we're not yes. doing anything where you, know, you can buy a gym and be open. I mean, we opened, we were open throughout the entire like process. Re process. So, yeah. like, you know, it's, which is good from a business perspective, but it's also like, it's, you have to, kind of figure out what you want to do. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't want to, you know, have to deal with where to put the pipe for the drainage. You know, it's right. just like, it's not what I'm into. Not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not architecture. What are, what are a couple of things you would, if somebody wanted to open a gym, give them some advice. What are some things you'd say, here's what has to happen? You have to have, to have good partners. <laughs> partners are individual owners. You need a business plan. Okay. Like you need a full fledged business plan of written out your mission, your vision, your goals, you need to have an analysis of the local area, population, medium income, just the whole business plan piece of, and then from there, like just the nuts and bolts of a business, right? Which is a lot of work. What your membership's going to look like, what your economics look like, what your example P and L looks like for five years, what's your break-even point? Just the, the 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 simple math that's going to allow you to actually do what you love, right? Right, and that's just math. It's just numbers. What your investment is. Um, try not to take out a loan if you can. Just try to do it. Um, what your goal is like? Is your goal to run a gym to make money? Is your goal a gym to have you know partners 
and you know you kind of you coach and take a full time salary, or is it you to fund it and have someone else run it? Like there's a there's got so it's like sole owner, multiple owners, and where you have multiple owners, one operator, or owners that are removed and other operators. Right. And then once you have those answers through the business plan, it's a lot of work. Be prepared that it's probably you're going to do what you love. Do not assume you're going to coach every class for two years because you coach every class for two years and then you'll want to sell your gym. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you have to have, and it's hard when your full soul life and income is based on that because that's how you make your money is coaching cuts payroll and overhead. So if payroll goes to you, you don't have to pay anyone else. Uh, and then what's your plan after five years? How are you going to grow? You need to have a five-year plan because if you're in the same spot now in five years, I would assume you're probably not going to be that happy. You need some sort of gr growth plan for yourself, um, for your family, and so it's, it's it ha you have to have that 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 plan because everything else, like the passion, the coaching, like all that, like I almost feel like I would be insulting to like tell someone, hey, you got to care about this. Like if you're coming to me, like I, I think that's already a given, right? Right? It's it's the I see people that have passion. I see that that flame burn out. It's because they haven't challenged themselves and progressed enough, and they haven't given them something some, some, something new to do. Yeah, um, it's crazy. You've been talking about it for three minutes now, and you haven't even talked about CrossFit. Right. Yeah. Because because it's a it's, business. Yeah. And and I mean, it's because that's the easy stuff. Right. Because CrossFit's potent. It's simple. It's easy. You know, and, and maybe I take it for granted because I understand the methodology and I live it and I breathe it and, you know, but I, you know, I, you have to be that. And if I'm going to have a conversation with someone about opening up a gym, I probably won't have a conversation with you even about it if I don't even see that or feel it. Right. You know, and i I tell more people not to open up a gym than to open up a gym. For sure. I mean, gosh, I remember having a phone call with, with this, with these two kids and they were just like, and I, I said, and they just broke them and now I was like, I think you shouldn't do this. And they called me back a month later, like, thank you. Because like yeah. it was like, and, and they just kind of broke it down a little bit and they're like, yeah, like we thought about it more and did some math and it would have been a really bad idea. Right. You know, it's like, well, yeah. And like, it doesn't mean it's dead. It's just that opportunity didn't work. And you know, it's, it's, it's a lot and it's certainly depends on where you are. There's so many variables. It's a, the market is a, it's a, it's a saturated market. It's, which is okay. Mm -hmm. You just need to have more investment quality, and understanding yeah. the quality. It's just, it's a real business, yeah. you know? So, um, but it's also so, if you leave it just a passion or, or the love of CrossFit or whatever, it's still, uh, you know, if you don't understand the, the business side of it or, or what it, it takes, like you can still go and and have a career in CrossFit. Like, I mean, there's enough gyms in the in every area that's that are big enough who can provide you know full time opportunities. So I mean, if you have that, if you're just living off that passion, and that's why you want to open up a gym, and you don't really understand what's going on behind the scenes, and you think that it's gonna, you know make you rich through, right yeah well, uh, I think, uh, then it's not enough no yeah. well i think that's huge what you just said is where did you start you know like i think back to where i started i walked into crossfit to wit in syracuse new york and i said i'd like to coach here and they said well we have no opportunity for you i was like well can i work out here and like clean and help out and they're like yeah and then i was just always there and because i wanted to work out there and find an opportunity and one time someone showed up during a class and they wanted to take on ramp and they're like, well, you want to coach that person? I said, yeah. And I told them how to do a med ball clean. And that was my first time I ever coached CrossFit. You know, like nowadays kids are walking in wanting paid internships of 50 mm -hmm. grand a year mm -hmm. with their level one. It's like, great. Like the answer is no, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and it's, and I, that to me is like, you need to start and build up and, and, and learn. And, you know, that's probably my best piece of advice for you. Start at a gym, yeah. surround yourself with people and, you have to you know, do it all. Like, yeah, I mean, it's you're going to do more grunt work than coach, but when you're a gym owner, that's what you do anyway. Yeah. I clean more toilets than I clean, clean, you know, coach classes, you know, like, and... People I, forget that, right? Right. They forget everything. They love the working out part. Right. Mm -hmm. And they love to be inside of all that. Well, there's nothing wrong, but they forget about all those little details. Little yeah, stuff. Yeah, but when yeah. you think about it, though, when you open up a gym, mm. I mean, well, I guess you were a little older. Yeah. You had already worked at Reebok. Like yeah. You didn't, yeah, while. so yeah, that's when, a bit different. Cause, when did you open One Nation? First yeah. one nation. Gosh, we're four four year anniversary. Yeah, yes. four you had years. already been. I mean, it, yeah, you had been in CrossFit for about five years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just gonna say, like, that's how we started. Right. right? Like, we were just a, two dudes who loved working out and wanted to do our own thing. Right. Like, 
and that's the thing, like, even if everything that Austin has said is super important, like we didn't necessarily have that either. And there's a lot of gyms out there who, who still succeed, but, uh, it's a different time. You right? Adapt. It's yeah. And it's, it's different now. Every city has, like I said, a, a couple leading gyms yeah. who, you know, are big and who are doing the right things. Yeah. So it's, it's, you have to be a little bit more prepared and you have to have a little bit more than just, Hey, we're just a couple of dudes you want to work right. out. Yeah. I like what you said about really kind of knowing we can use the word your why. Yeah. Kind of figure out what that is a little bit before you get into the working out piece. So you can be unique and bring something. That's right. It's maybe a little bit different than what the guy down the street's doing. Right. So both of you guys have business partners, right? Yes. Yep. You just, mm-hmm. there's two of you. Yeah. We're three. A three. And yeah. how many there's I have two, two and, and three. three. Okay. Yeah. Well, so like, yeah, so talk how that kind of works. Like, I mean, there's it's got to be a delicate situation at times, right? You know, well, I've like, lost two of them already. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we I started mean, out as three, and yeah. then we lost one. We had another third, lost that one. Yeah, I mean, so, that's <laughs> yeah, because uh, that's when I we looked at opening CrossFit Mayhem back in this when we talked about reopening CrossFit Mayhem because we opened the first one in 09. But um, after we were at CrossFit Cookville for a while, when we merged with them, we were looking at opening Mayhem, and so I was talking to Bill Henniger. Mm. And he said, uh, you know, I was kind of telling him what the plan was and kind of had a business partner. And he was like, um, you're married and you love your wife, right? I said, yeah. He goes, would you want to have two wives? And I said, absolutely not. He goes, then don't have a business partner. <laughs> and so I took that advice and, you know, I've, my wife is technically my business partner, but. Yeah, um, she's the owner. Yeah, she, she runs the show. But mm-hmm. um, so that luckily for us, mm-hmm. I mean, that and that has turned out well, um, you know, just the way things have gone. But I mean, maybe speak to how how it has worked for you guys or how you've made at least one of them stay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They keep leaving you. Is it, I don't want, is it common, you and, common denominator. Yeah, there. I don't know. It's probably me. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not you. It's me routine. No, right? I, I think yeah. it's me. Yeah. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that if you can, if I, you know, I think it's all situationally dependent. Yeah. I knew that I couldn't run the gyms. Right. So I needed a partner that could be more present. Um, I, when we opened up one nation, the goal was to create something bigger than one gym and for not and for me not like me personally as an owner not to make money off of it the goal was a longer vision you know full transparency if you the purpose of our gym was really and still is is to give coaches opportunities for careers not jobs and i cuz i saw the trend and i still see the trend in the world of crossfit is is a four year life cycle with coaches and they burn out and they move on they don't have the opportunity for for growth so I knew that what well, we needed to be well capitalized and we needed good people in the fold and smart people and I couldn't do it alone. And I think that for me was, all right, well, then I need a business partner because I, you know, like you only can spread yourself so thin so and, thin, yeah. and, and I, you know, you've and, got more things going on than most people that I know. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, so that's for me was a business partner. And, and I think three at first was like, it was, it was good because of the, the, we were splitting roles and, and to be honest, they were all like, you know, they weren't like bad breaks. It was a lot of it was, we're super invested. There's two of us that are super invested and the third was just couldn't put in what we wanted. And so it was just, a, it was a amicable, you know, just kind of moving on. And, and I think that's, and as, and now as we've grown, I mean, gosh, my business partner and I that own two of the gyms together, the third but is Cross of Boston with James. We're so James, we, right. we have three. I mean, we operated for, th- for three years on a handshake deal, right? you know, which is, I don't recommend that. <laughs> um, but in the, also the notion is that you do have to trust your business partner. And like, you know, I think that that is really important um, because in the trust is so important in a partnership, mm-hmm. but no doubt it's at some point going to deteriorate and trust that the, the, the worst case scenario will happen. And if you know that and accept that when I, when I opened up one nation as well, I assumed that every dollar I put in, I'd never make back. Mm. I, I committed that every single cent I put in, I will never see again emotionally cut ties with people like that's crazy. I was like, that's the only way I can emotionally live with it because I can't be there every day. And the, if I'm emotionally invested, I have to be physically invested. Right. So for me, it was, I'm going to put it in, I'm going to create this, I'm going to help put good people in there. I'm going to impact as much as I can. But if I never see a dime, I'm okay with that. And that's my mindset. And I feel like if you don't have that mindset, then you're kind of cruising for a bruising because you're too emotional about it. And, mm-hmm. and I think your situation is a little different because you own and operate Mm -hmm. and i don't really do that as much at one nation yeah and you also have i mean you had a full-time job correct like you have a full-time job and and your your ability of being present at your gyms is is different Mm -hmm. but yeah when we opened up it was 
for me, it was a no brainer. I needed a partner. Right. Mm. Like I just couldn't do it by myself. And, um, and you know, cause even, you know, six years ago, having full-time coaches and, and gyms giving careers, like wasn't really happening. Right. So for us, it was just thinking we're going to open up the gym and we're going to work in it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what we did. And we're coming up on uh, five years and uh, I keep joking with them. That's like, I think if we make it five years, like we're good. Yeah. You know? Well, but like, average small business only lasts three. Yeah. And the partnership, I mean, right. like in terms of divorce rates as well. Mm. Right. Right. <laughs> How are they in Canada? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's... Uh, the, well, no one gets married the, in Canada, right? That's no, we thing. get married. We get married. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's the majority we're, we're of the divorces 50, happen in the first yeah, seven 49%, years or percent so. yeah. yeah. But um, no, and we've actually brought on someone else too. And I love what you said about, you know, giving people careers and, and not just coaching jobs or... Uh, we had a guy come in when we started the gym like six months in and he just you know, wanted to coach with us and he was great and great athlete, great coach, great dude. And he just stuck with us and he, you know, he put his head down and he put the work in and, uh, his name's Pete Shaw and he's also on staff now. Mm. And, uh, you know, he came to us like a year and a half ago and he just said like, I, you know, I need more. And, uh, we couldn't give him more in terms of, you know, salary or whatever. So we, you know, offered him some, some ownership. Nice. Yeah. And he stuck around. So now we're actually three. Actually, three, which is great. You know, for me, I can sleep easy being on these seminars. I can mm -hmm. sleep easy taking a week and going to do the the power Other monkey things, or whatever yeah. or competing. And I know that the guys back at the gym right. love it just as much as I do, and right. you know, take, take care, care of, it. of it. Yeah, exactly. And um, and that's just helped me a lot with my family as well, and being able to still be on the road and do the seminars and do everything else that I want to do and spend time with the family at home. Um, but the the gym is still thriving. Right. Yeah. Talk about a little bit, you, uh, all of you guys are accomplished CrossFit athletes. Talk about the difference between being a CrossFit athlete and being a coach. Because I know that that's different, that's different for each guy, but those are two different worlds. And sometimes the best athletes don't make the best coaches. So what would you, what would you say about that in your life and your evolution? Start, Rich. I mean, I don't really coach much. So, I mean, I. You know, we have our crew that we work out with, and then we've got some guys and girls that work out in the afternoons right. and stuff like that. But uh, I'm not there a ton coaching-wise. I've do. i I've gotten more involved with the kind of behind-the-scenes day-to-day stuff, um, but I haven't really jumped back into coaching. I've, but you've been doing, like, some, some seminars yeah, and some we do tours, seminars and you, and you train like with that. Rich. I'm sure you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, um, but I'm just – it's not my – You're still competing coach. pretty I'm hard, competing and that's your focus. Hard. That's my focus. Yeah. And um, But, yeah, I mean – you know, we talked about it a little bit. That's just not where right. right now where I'm at. So, I think the, I think the biggest thing is when you compete, you really have to be selfish. Mm. I mean, your goal is to win, win, and therefore you should be selfish with your training, with what you need. I mean, that's the sacrifices you make. Part, you know, part of that are the relationships and you know other people around you to allow you to elevate you and have the goals. When you coach, you need to be selfless. Yeah. Um, I can tell you it's been my it's always my biggest struggle in like the game season is you know I train in my gym and I have a hard time very hard time emotionally training during classes mm. when I'm not in the class when I'm just doing you know our team training or stuff like that because I feel obligated there's like a there's a part like I, I, I gravitate towards helping my, my members and I you know it's and that's that's the difference is that there's that pull of like, man, like I should be helping that person. Like, that's what I'm like, that's my purpose. That's what I should be doing. And that's the biggest difference. You're, you're, you're selfish or you're selfless. And in coaching, you're in service of others. And when you are competing and training to compete, you're in service of yourself because that's your job. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the biggest difference. And it's something that I've struggled with. And, and I, I, I sit my whole team down, my coaching staff and, you know, I tell them I have a hard time with this, you know, and they literally tell me, they, they take me off the schedule. Like they have to push me away during the game season because they tell me to go home early, like things like that or else I'll just, you know. So it's for me, I need other people to tell me what to do at that point. And that's what helped, helps me during that, that time. But that's, that's what I see the biggest difference as. Yeah. For me, it's just, I, I, like I'm honest with, with the people that, that uh, I started the gym with and, and with these guys, it's, I've always just really enjoyed training. So like I, when I got into the sport, it was literally just to, to train. It wasn't really a passion for, for coaching, even helping people, to right. be honest. Mm. And I've kind of like even, I've, I've just grown into that. You know, I've kind of realized that, you know, if I want to compete and if I want to train, uh, pretty much it was like, hey, this is a good side gig. Like I should coach. 
And that's how I kind of got into that. And um, that passion obviously grew tr- tremendously. And I kind of see it as well as, you know, I'm I'm not going to compete forever. No one will. Right. And, you know, I haven't win, won the games four years in a row. Right. So, I, <laughs> so, so you, know, you know where I'm going with that. Sure. It's, like, it's a life For plan, sure. right? Like, I'm glad you just, let people know that. There, what's that? That you haven't won the games four years They know in a row. that? Yeah, now they do. <laughs> now they do. You yeah. know what I've done four years in a row, though? Demo, Demo team. team. And yeah. yeah, you've done a damn good job. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. That's but unparalleled. That will never happen again. Yeah. No, no a lot of there stuff will never happen again. Hey, I'm the only one. <laughs> But yeah, so it's for me. It was always, it, you know, it was. It's a bit different than these guys because me. It was like, hey, let's go back to the games, right? Like I, I right. was, I was there four years ago, and it was always a constant struggle. Like, am I should I be putting more time in the in the training right. to try and chase this dream of going back, or should I just invest myself more into the gym? And I found that um, I was able to do both, mainly because of my partners. But I still haven't gone to the games, so maybe. Maybe I, I, I lacked a little something there. But, you know, again, it comes back to the partners and, and them mm-hmm. understanding my goals and, and respecting those as well. Right. So. I love what you had to say about the selfish piece. I stopped a young coach the other day and I told him he, he's, he's, he knows what to say and he does a good job with all that. But I told him, as soon as you stop making this about you, you know, you're up here talking, you're, you're saying, you're instructing. As soon as it's not about you and it's about them, you're going to be a really good coach. Yeah. You know? Nicole Carroll, the director of uh, of training and, and CrossFit certification, she said once, and it's just so true, you need to constantly evaluate yourself and ask yourself, are you in service to yourself or others? Are you doing, when you're a coach, what are you doing? Are, is it for you to make yourself, like, and, and when you're speaking, when you're lecturing, is are you talking to make yourself look and sound better, or are you in service to others? Um, and I think that's, and that's what coaching is. You know, it's, it's, it's a, you're in service, it's, it's, you're in the service industry. Um, so it's, and that's why it's exhausting. You know, it's, it's, a, uh, you know, I don't, I've, I haven't seen an effective coach that can coach two classes, you know, t- you know more than two hours in a row. Cause after two hours in a row, you're just fried. like fried, yeah. smoked, Done. it's, you're, you're dead, you know? And it's cause you give it all you got. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since it's been brought up now and we have two, three games athletes. Yeah. Let's talk about changes. Changes. Hmm. What do we know? Does anybody know what's going on? I think this is the first time we've actually talked about this on the podcast. Oh, boy. That's the title. That'll be clickbait. Yeah, it's clickbait right here. That's it. 30 minutes in. you got to wait for 30 minutes, though. you got to listen to other crap. you got to listen to yeah. Austin for 30 minutes, and then we'll talk about That's the it. games. Smart. How much time do we got? Make sure we... Uh, we're at 32 okay. right now, so we have right. 28 minutes right. to talk right. about the games. I mean, you know, me, I guess what we know mm-hmm. is that regionals is gone. And everybody freaked out about that. Yeah. Um, we know that one person from every country that has an affiliate will qualify from the Open. We know that 20 people from the Open will qualify from the Games, individuals, Correct. Male, and male and female. Yeah. We know that there are how many events now? Well, Nine? there will be 16 There's supposed sanctioned. to be 16, but we're we not don't, there yet. And I think we It's going to be tough to push. It's going to be tough to push. We're at nine, I think. We're at nine now, but I mean, they want to get 16 six- for this year, though. They'd like to. I think that's the is game it? plan. That's, they just that's added Waterpalooza, water right? Waterpalooza. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it just, yeah. I mean, there's more in the pipeline. They just have to, like, sign contracts and stuff. So. And that only six, t- and teams. And only, teams can only qualify from said competitions. Correct. And. So, wait, do you have to do the Open then? No. We, nobody knows. Oh, we I mean, don't right know that. right now. We don't know. Like, what? Well, I mean, I'm sure you'd probably, they'll make you sign up for the Open. Yeah. Right? You have to be signed up for the open. Um, but minimum minimum score required. Something like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, teams have to qualify there. You can have super teams. You don't have to live in the same area. Right. Um, We've already seen a couple teams put get put together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I I would just I would like to see some rules. You know, like what are we gonna do? what are we gonna see? Yeah. What the what the what counts as what country do you live in? Four yeah. individuals. Um, do you have to declare a team or individual at the beginning of the season, which I think should be – you should have to. Yeah. Um, or you could do, you know, sanctional events, sanctioned events, whatever, um, as an individual and on a team yeah. just to kind of hedge your bet. Yeah, which I don't like. Um, what else is there? There's just some unknowns that I would like to see kind of cleared yeah. up. I think It's been a little yeah. too silent, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think that if you were to break it down fully, I think that – I think the individual – side of the competition at the top top will be unaffected unaffected 
you have 20 spots, you have sanctioned competitions. They, you know, they're seasoned. You're going to have to make the open a little bit, the standards and the video stricter. Like, you know, how far are your, is your barbell set up from the pull-up bar? Like, it has to be a set distance. Like, there needs to be yeah. some of and that stuff. And it could stuff. be a, more of a complete test, too, because, I mean, in the past, the open Only is, test engine stuff, yeah, and, and, really. And I mean, you can say there's some strength It's stuff, the but. entire year and it's the entire season that's like this one complete test, mm -hmm. right? And now it's like not everyone's going to be doing the same test to get to the end goal. So what's the open going to represent? Yeah. I guess now the open has to represent a little bit more of a complete test. Yeah. You know, who's who's governing the the new events? I mean, who's programming and the event? That's the that's the, what we're hearing. From, the event. From, from what we hear, it's run like the affiliate model. So you know, if you have a sanctioned event, you you know there are some guidelines, but very little, and but and it will be run. And you know the way. For those of you that were around in what 2010, 2010 sectionals, they did sectionals. regionals, regionals reg were the same way. Yeah, sectionals and regionals were programmed by the affiliate, with some guidance from you know I think HQ. I, yeah. HQ I believe they sent their workouts in and gave some feedback. But what we did at Albany, you know, when I when I New Jersey was the New York New Jersey sectional, then we were in Albany for the uh, you know the Northeast. That was programmed by. Jason Ackerman there and, and Greg Arsenic down there. Uh, Johnny Mac. Yeah. And so. And Russell Berger did our sectional. Right. You know. I don't think there's. I, I Honestly, I think. I think the doing the private or private or the sa sa sanctioned events instead of regionals is fine. I think it's kind of cool. I think there's, you know. Um, I, I, I don't see a problem with that as long as, like we said, the workouts are yeah. enough of a test. They're not super crazy. Like, you know how people want to one-up each That's what we were talking about last mm -hmm. night. People are going to try to want to one-up each other. Yeah. Get and creative. Get, you, know, yeah. you know, like, oh, well, my workout was better than your workout. And it's just, who knows what's going to happen there. So there needs to be some type of, like, it can't just get it can't, ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Um, Safe. Too. I think like, it, it gives athletes a, more of an opportunity to showcase what they have. I mean, you've got more opportunities. You can go to different competitions. You're not just doing one a year. You can do mm -hmm. multiple, like we talked about last night, kind of like a PGA Tour type deal. Yep. Um, but then you're also going to have athletes that are like, what competition are you going to? All right, I'm going to that one. You go to this one. Like, right. you'll see that's kind of going to. Jockey in, yep. yeah. Yeah. Um, so, wouldn't you think that a point system yeah, I think could a point system that. would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Still with some wild card, but I mean, it would it, there would be like sort of a world tour. Your, and, and maybe you know, that comes, you know, I, yeah. this is year one. Man, and that would be hard, though. Is that sustainable to, could, yeah, on you your body? You, yeah, I couldn't do 13 competitions a year. No, you know? but maybe, no, but maybe you wouldn't have to. Maybe you have to do four. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's kind of like golf, right? Like, they don't have, yeah. they don't do them all, right? Yeah, I don't know how that. I'm not sure, but like. And I, it, I just watched Tiger win a couple weeks ago. That's the first time I watched golf in years. <laughs> Me too. I just That's when I first read a headline. I know. I, I think when it's all said and done, I think that the teams are most dramatically affected. Mm -hmm. Individuals are, are less affected. I think that it it's a massive commitment yeah. now, uh, yeah. specifically for teams, individuals more so too. But you know, the bottom of the barrel or bottom level athletes, because it's like, yep. are you going to travel all the way to Madison if you're, you know, ranked two right. or whatever many we have? But if you're ranked 150th, are you even going to make that trip? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I, you know, I think it's from the spectator perspective. I I don't think it'll. I think I don't think it'll change much. You know. Yeah. But I definitely think that you have to think long and hard if you want to compete. Are you, you know, even more than before, are you willing to essentially sacrifice if you go to a minimum of four competitions, average of three days with Mission travel? Work. Yeah. Travel. We're, so we're talking 30 days on the road. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a huge commitment where before you commit the open is five weeks in your home gym, you commit to a regional, and then if you make it to the game. So. The, the, the time commitment and the money commitment is so much greater, I think you're just going to see a massive drop off of, of essentially think about all the regional athletes that are almost top 10 or uh, lo, you know lower than the top 10. They have to think what, you know. What's the point? Exactly. Yeah. How do I afford this? Right. And why? I mean, right. you, you can say unless that. Unless it's a local, unless it's a closer competition, they're like, all right, I can get in and, and go for it. Yeah, know? but there's a lot of people registered for this Dubai Open qualifier. Like yeah. a lot. Yeah, but, you know. Register for the Open is a lot different than going to Dubai. Yeah, but why do you think they're registering? Obviously, it's it's to go. And if you qualify for Dubai, then you can, you know. And if you don't have sponsors yet, then you can go fishing for sponsors. And 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 all these only have one, by the way. You got to win. Yeah, that's the it's thing. hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. think anyone realizes it's hard to win things. Yeah, like, like you top, know. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I mean, top two, top three might even be like I don't know. 
and this is just me thinking out loud, like you take the top 20 from the open, that's fine, whatever. And then maybe the top two and three from each of these events, instead of taking the top in every country, you know, like, mm-hmm. and I, and I'm all for some of these other countries getting more involved in it growing in those areas. But, um, you want to see the best competition there, you know, like oh, yeah. that's, that's why people come to watch. And I, and, and you said it right there, people come to watch the people, you know, CrossFit is, we've been rewarding the, the, the consistency in athletes mm-hmm. for years. Right, so could create I'm, some disparity, huh? Yeah, like I'm, gonna, I'm just yeah, thinking of guys of who have been in the games. And let's say you know finished top ten in the last like five years or four years, uh, who have never won events, never won uh, regionals, right. and who will probably not win any well, of we these were, sanctional events. We we're talking about Hendel last night. Right. Yeah, Hendel barely makes it in the open. Right. Barely so, makes it at regionals and then crushes it at the games because right, yes. he's an incredible athlete. Right. You yeah. Know, so like, that guy will not get a shot. No. Right. Because yeah. you're not going to see those type of events at some of these. Right. I don't know. Yeah. the 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 thing is like that's because and we can look at the new new uh, you know standards or whatever and and think that it it's not going to be the same and it won't. Right. You won't get the forty fittest people in the world. You get the top. You get twenty maybe. 20 yeah. You get the fittest. The, yeah. Twenty. Yeah. And then you get a lot more. Mm-hmm. And it's like. That's just the way it's going to be now. Well, you know, then, but I mean, who knows what the Open's going to turn into and, and what these what it'll look like if it's going to be a different test. But, I mean, we talked about it last night. We had You had guys that were the top four in the world and then didn't eat, were in the final or the first heat at regionals. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. I mean, like that, and that happens every year exactly. in every region. Be, and I'm not calling people out for cheating, but, yeah. but what's the deal? Like, right. The programming wasn't that much different, you know. It's fitness is fitness. Fitness you know? is fitness, yeah. no matter how you do it. So yeah, it's like if you're. I mean, it, yeah. I so mean, that's the frustrating part. Is like you see all these people that put their life and everything else into it, and for it to be, you know, who knows? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I mean, as you know, gosh, being in the sport a long time, it's. We're both going on 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Start at the same time, buddy. That's, that's right. First year, White Knight. That's right, the White Knight. <laughs> white Knight, that's I had right. the headband. I, oh, gosh, that picture of us running up the stairs. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, it's awesome. We There's didn't an old know. picture here somewhere. There's Is that us. an old picture? That's I, really old right there. Yeah. Which one? What do you got, the zigzags on or zigzags? Uh, <laughs> no, those are the running buddies, the uh, real flex, I believe. Oh, yeah, the 67 running I'm buddies. To think of what what would you give them a cue there? Overhead squatting, looking over your That's side. overhead squat. Man, see, uh, don't look, look at me. They told me to do that, man. Come on. You, you look, look really different. Arm, arm you look pulling. really different on the cover of Men's Health. There. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Doesn't look Not like even like sure it's the same Who guy. Who is that? Look at you looking on the rope climb over your shoulder. Like, man, we don't, I don't have any of us over here. <laughs> no, I know. I didn't make the cut. Oh, is that Hillary? And oh, yeah. On your shoulders? Yeah, she worked out for a couple of days there. That's good. There's a bunch of final event. Yeah, but I mean, we got 10 years. Like you're saying, you got 10 years and it's... Yeah. Zoma, this was like one of the best years I thought of the games. Like it was well-programmed. It yeah. ran well. I would agree. You know, last year, when it was the first year it was in Madison, it was it reminded me a lot of a glorified regional. Like, yeah. really. Yeah. And then this year was awesome. It was... It was so it, buttoned it, up. It was one of I the... Loved it. One of the best... I think one of the best games that we've had. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the most fun that I've been to. Um, and so it was just kind of weird or frustrating that it was like kind of pulled out from the rug was pulled out from under us yeah. you know so i mean but it's not ours to do and yeah. you know, we're here and you can't really do anything about the not, it not knowing is hard the not knowing mm-hmm. is the hardest part it's like you know at this point in the game it's, this, like, it's yeah. it affects a lot of people's lives and nobody right. really knows what's going on and i mean you know i'm sure they're they're taking their time and making sure everything's right before they release all the stuff but i it's almost like why don't why not leave it the way it was for a year and get all these changes ironed out and then release them. Right. Um, I have a question for you guys. What's your question? I wasn't in CrossFit when they went from sectionals, sectionals to the Open. Mm. What kind of reaction was there in the community with that? I don't even remember, really. Because that's a huge change as well, it, right? It was, I think, it, from what I remember, it was a lot of it was... I didn't want to do it. Right. I, no, I, I didn't have to do right. it technically. Yeah, because they had all these, like, it was funny rules of, like, they Man, like, they would wave... Like, if you chain. got top five, you got to go the next year without having to qualify. You just went to the games. And then if you won the games, you were qualified for life. Oh, yeah, he and changed that. And they took that away the year I qualified. Uh, didn't, call <laughs> didn't they call it the Jason Kalipa rule? He doesn't I want Jason Kalipa at, at 50 <laughs> Man, years I, old honestly, still Honestly, I think it's like, hey, if you, if you <laughs> win the games and you make top 10 the next year, I think you should... You should almost be like it's almost like a you know legacy right. type deal, yeah. 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 Not saying that I would ever do that, but I, a lot of us were like, "How are we going to do this? How are they going to judge?" Hey, you? would you have qualified for the game? Would you finish top twenty in the open this year? 
This year? Yeah. Like, or this coming year? Did you this last year? No. Did not, you? Not in the world. No. Were you? No. no, not in the world. I was like top 50, I think, but... I was yeah. about to say, that could you went to the games as an individual without having to do a qualifier? No. 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 And I redid it. Like, I, like, I, it's not like, oh, you know, if I thought about it, no, I gave it all I had. I wouldn't have been yeah. top 20. Like, that's it. Like, <laughs> it's it. like Did you yeah. win a workout? Yeah, I did win a workout worldwide. Yeah, did. That's deadlift, my goal. Deadlift, deadlift, so if you give me a deadlift workout... I you won it. that deadlift workout worldwide. Yeah, I have a couple of worldwide we were, runs. We were close, weren't we? Yeah. 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 You. Uh, you redid it, didn't you? Yes. I beat you, and you redid it. Well, yeah. <laughs> I did. Well, well, yeah. Out of the park. I did. I did not redo one workout this year. Really? Man, I never. And I never once <laughs> looked at the scoreboard. Wow. You used to redo them all, all right? the time, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I just I look. didn't as an individual, and then yeah. when I got on a team, for some reason, I was like, I, I f it, I'll just redo them all all the time. I did yeah. one workout four times. That's because you're a bro. Twice in one day. The deadlift and one. No, it was the Which power one? snatch bar muscle up. It yeah. got the same score both times. That's a painful one. <laughs> Grip was gone. 2016. Yeah. All for the same yeah. score. All for the I got three. The Awful. same score three times. It's, it's almost better than at least getting like one more rep is just demoralizing too. Yeah, you waste all. The, but that was like a seven or eight minute workout. Whereas yeah. like you go 20 minutes to get five more that, reps. It's yeah. like, nah, dude. Like that rowing um, total only. bar uh, hand yeah, cleaner this year. Once. Oh. This year I switched it up and went. You, I sorry, trained Dennis. normal through Thursday, yeah. swam Friday, and then went for the workout on I Saturday. I remember you told me that. Man, that was the best. Because like, yeah. usually the opens just... Because you also learn what like all the little tips yeah, and tricks. Because yeah, everybody cheats. Everybody figures out a little like hack and how to like, you know... Shave off four minutes because so they... towed a bar with your rower on, you know, like... How did you guys feel this year in the open? Like when you guys knew you are going team? Like it essentially means... Doesn't mean that much. Like how, what's the, what's the stress level? What's the nervous level like? I mean, I still hate the open because it's always you're always or I'm always compared. Like it's always like, well, yeah, how's course. Rich doing? Blah blah blah. And right. I'm like, this what's year, Rich doing? Ah, there you go. But, I mean, this year Rest with the knee stuff, yeah. it was like, all right, I got to be smart here right. and and just do my thing. So that's, like yeah. I said, doing them once this year and not looking at the scoreboard, I was just like, all right, I feel good. Mm -hmm. And putting that putting that limit, yeah, was a lot of peace of mind for you. Yeah, you weren't worried about trying to be so competitive. And yeah, I would have qualified. <laughs> <laughs> you were top 20? I was 10th. Oh, man. Yeah. That's now, now here's the Once, question. Now here's out. the question. Would I go individual if my team didn't make it? Yeah. I don't think so. Really? No. I don't, man, I don't, I do not, no part of me, no part of me wants to do that. First dad to ever win the CrossFit Games? Oh, no, you did it in 2014. <laughs> yeah, I did. Come on, bro. Uh, Jason, was he a dad? No, he wasn't a dad. He wasn't. Am I the only dad? Yeah, but I was, well, she I think was, about, was only know. like a week old. Say. Huh? It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't matter. That's true. That's true. I'll take it. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, man. Of course. Fourteen. That I was could, cool. Man, that, I mean, and that's what we, it always comes down to is everybody wants to know, you know, like, could you beat Frazier? Can, you know, would you go back individual? It, it's just not who I, like, I don't have that physically. I feel great other than my knee. Um, but this last year is the best I felt in years. But I don't have that, like, that just... Kill switch. Kill switch. You know, yeah. like I'm, I, I still love to train. I still have fun and like, and you're I like to good. throw down. I'm decent. You know, yeah. like I'm, I'm okay <laughs> fitness wise. You're pretty good. Yeah. But I just don't like, no part of me wants to do anything individual. Like I'll kill myself for my team. Yeah. And, and why didn't do... you want to do that team workout? What team workout? <laughs> Today in the barn? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, cause I'd already we had this thing in my head and it was like sitting there and I wanted to do it. Yeah. I didn't want to have to make that a team uh, workout. I don't know assholes. how we could have made that a team workout. You just, you know. wanted to tandem row. I, yeah. <laughs> I just, I just wanted some work to rest for you. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You were looking yeah. at that pegboard for a while. <laughs> but like, that's, that's the hard part for me is like, I don't like if I get into an individual workout and I just don't have that where I'm like, oh, I, I still am competitive. Like, that's who I am. Like, yeah. that's part of who I am. Like, I still want to compete. But I'm just like, ah, you know. Yeah. And it's not my – that's not what I think about all the time is training. What am I going to do next? Right. Like, now it's like, all right, I trained. At least I did something today. I'm good. I'm going to go hang with my kids. Like, yeah. and now mm -hmm. having, you know, having – we were talking about it earlier. Having Trice walk around out there and just, like, Amazing. be a dude, you yeah. know, and Lakeland out there you know, riding on the whiteboard or swinging on the rope or yeah. – I mean, that's what – that's what's cool. And to see, like, Trice now is, like, we were doing burpees earlier, and he's trying to do some burpees. Yeah, And cool. trying to pick things up and, you know, like, yelling. And it's uh, that's, that's the, the stuff that, you know, that's where it's at right now versus right. Yeah. I just don't have that, that kill switch anymore, right. I guess. You can't you can't afford to be that selfish anymore. No. Right. No, it's, and I mean, and like you were talking about in, the early, in earlier, like, I was selfish. I There was a lot of stuff I missed out family-wise. 
uh, you know, just I just life. put a lot life. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we talked about that earlier mm-hmm. yesterday. We were talking about you know like pro athletes and you know the it, difference this, in yeah the sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. you're you're ten years behind really, but I'm one of the top one percent that uh, it paid off. You exactly. Know? But, but like, it's just it's just different, you know, and and that's not who I am anymore. So right. that's what's you know the the only flashers of I've kind of had that. Um, in the last couple of years was that, and we've talked about it a couple of times, was that power snatch total bar or t- power snatch bar muscle up workout at the games this year. The uh, 12, yeah. was it 12, nine, six? Yeah. Yeah. Or 15, 12, nine, yeah. 12, nine, six, whatever it was. And when, you know, Jared was there and I was like, all right, I can, let's, let's do this. So that was fun to like, what do you mean? Relive. Like you went for it? I went for it a little bit. I was like, I, I kind of pulled it back. Cause I was like, all right, let's see what happens. Yeah. But Man, it was fun. That was cool to like see the crowd get fired up yeah. and, and to to do that. Was stuff. that basically like you saying I'm still here, bitches? <laughs> no. Yeah, he no. had the walk. He had the walk. You know, he took the shirt off. He walked to the bar, muscle up bar. He knew he had. Hey, yeah. You know, you got to sometimes you got to do a show. You know, hey, like yeah. people like a show. You had, yeah, you had a few moments. You put the show and people loved it. People the re- loved the show. The, I, I don't know if you've ever heard the rest of the team talk about it, but they totally put you in a position. They wanted to put you in a position to have to do that again. Oh, really? You know, they yeah. talked about that afterwards when they got up here. Like, they wanted to see that from you again. Right. That's cool. I love that. Well, they should have went faster and I would have had to do that. <laughs> I know. So, right. I mean, I was hoping, too. The worst thing, too, is I was like, if I have to go head-to-head with Darren, because those are good movements for Darren, yeah. too. <laughs> and I was like, if it's just me and Darren head-to-head, like, I don't want this to happen. Right. So, did you, what leg did you do? The first one. First one. That was so that was bad. awful. That yeah. was so I, bad. No part of me wanted to. Like, I looked at that workout. I was like, Hewitt, it's all you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then man. gladly, he was like, sure, I'll do that one. I yeah. was like, all right, good, because. We were a little behind, so I, 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 of course, just went full send, and not, it was not a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> that workout, you had to go full send. I know. Like, it was just like, just go. I think I failed the chest of our pulp, like my last rep. I just like went. We were watching, uh, <laughs> was it Rachel? Not Rachel. What is it? She was on Don't Stop. What's the, is it Rachel? Uh, Not Sheila? Sheila, the other girl. Yeah, I don't know her name. Uh, but she went, I mean, pulling that, gripping and ripping that bar, and you're like, Dang, and then the last couple chest of bar, it was like, ooh, oh, not, ooh, uh, See you fail, later. gun. She yeah. did good, though, so. Yeah. It's she good. still, I think, won that. Yeah, that uh, heat. That, that, heat. That's, that set, yeah. Yeah. What do you think of that? More more super teams like that coming at you guys? You guys are keeping this, this yeah, team Yeah, we're keeping together? the same team. Yeah. You know, like, I, I would, I'd take my crew no matter where, um, no matter what happens. Trey's, Trey's super fit. He'll kill himself. Tasia, I mean, she did the games last year and trained all the games last year with a broken foot. Um, wow. Savage. And Kristen is just a bulldog. Man. Paul was almost on the team. Almost. Yeah, you got we, I invited him. He and sold his fault, house. Sold his house. Had let to us, buy, freed had to his buy, dog had like to buy it in the wild. Had to buy it back. <laughs> what? No. What's no. the story? No, 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 no. Turn around the woods. And then Dre was like, I saw the story is I text Paul because we talked at the after party and yeah. we knew Hewitt was retiring. And I was like, Paul, you want to come to Cookville? He's like, yeah, why not? And so he was like in, and then Dre. But we had a couple of beers, so we weren't really sure, right? <laughs> right. I wasn't really sure, and then he, he threw it I, back I at me. I texted you a yeah. couple of days later, and yeah. when I was, we were in, and then Dre yeah. was like, hey, man, I'd really like to be on the team this year. Can I be on the team? And and Dre's been loyal, and loyalty is one of my yeah, biggest of values. And so he's been with us since day one, and he's a fit dude. And I was like, yes, Dre, you can be on the team. So, man, it hurt to text Paul and be like, hey. <laughs> Oh. Got cut right before I made the team. <laughs> nice. No, the joke was just that he he messaged me after. He's like, "Hey, man, I, like I'm really sorry. I hope you didn't sell your house." Yeah. So now they're all like, "Yeah, we sold my house." <laughs> oh wow. So I've been, I've been giving him shit. You know. Yeah. He offered me water upstairs, and I'm like, "Yeah, but are, are you? Is this okay? Can I yeah. have it, or can <laughs> I gonna take it? You take it back? Give her. So yeah. basically, you you made him homeless. Is that what we're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and his two yeah. kids and wow. wife. Like, but you know what? None of that mattered when they announced these changes. No. Yeah. Because right? they like, didn't even have to move. So. I love that. Yeah, wow. So it is what it is, but that's awesome. That's my spiel on the whole, it and is. I guess all of our yeah. our talk. I mean, there's probably some things we could say off camera, but we won't say those. <laughs> but uh, what on the waves? Yeah, all Cruise. three of us. Oh. All yeah. three of us. And a Jim, lot more. you should go. I'll go. Done. We'll what on the waves? We'll get you on the boat. Okay. Yeah, because we're gonna do a yeah, podcast and do a podcast every single Let's day. Let's do it. I'm in. Okay. Do okay. It. Him and his wife. Kristen. You're on the boat. Okay. Okay. Great. Done. Because we are going to do like uh, we we'll do a bunch of podcasts out there. That'd be great. So we bring should bring our stuff. And bring our stuff. Have a good time. Good to go. What are we doing? What is what on the ways? What, what is what on the ways? Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did I just say yes to? Yeah. So we essentially got a boat, the eleventh largest boat 
Is it in the world? What's what's the company behind it? Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean, Royal Caribbean okay. and it's the Mariner of the Seas. I don't. I honestly like the boat is gig- it's, I don't understand. It. I don't understand how it floats. Um, but <laughs> ballast, I think. Yeah, like what is like what is it? Boyle's law, I believe yeah, it is. So. It's is it mo- Boyle. It's not ballast. Floating. Was Wasn't that Eureka? <laughs> who who no, is that? It's Boyle's law. I'm pretty sure. Kristen, look up the rule. No. Like Facundo, who Boyle's law? That's how boats floating. F- no, the guy who 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 figured out how things float. How things float. Boyle's Law. Mr. Boat. No, he said Eureka. Okay. The guy who says Eureka. Anyways, go on. So, yeah. anyway, Boyle's Law. But Newton. it's, uh, so we're going to, uh, it no. it's not Newton. <laughs> Newton. <laughs> yeah, so essentially we're like, you know, we, we, we work with the crew and the idea was, hey, a bunch of fit people like to go on vacation. You know, the, the, the joke for a cruise is like, you know, newlywed overfed or nearly dead, I believe is the joke for people on cruises. And I know, I know that's mean, but I, it, you know, you know, truth said in jest, but so we wanted to create a, vaca- a vacation where it was centered around one health, fitness, lifestyle, but put a bunch of like-minded maniacs on a boat and have a good time. You know, we've all been on vacation and done our thing and, we, and all of us usually just like bring our workout stuff with us why and not uh, have it there. Why not have it there? A boat's a cool idea. Cause it's a, it is an ecosystem, but you can control it. So, like, we have, like, Eva Claire Sinkowski and... Archimedes. Which is... No. Buoyancy principle. Okay. I Sorry. Was Archimedes. Greek? Archimedes. Archimedes. Archimed. That's what... It, yeah. That's right. There he goes. Type in Boyle's Law. Okay. Sorry. Back to where you yeah. were at. So, well, right, like, like, we, like, we, can, like we can control everything, like, the diet and all that other stuff. And, like, you know, but we'll, we'll have workouts all day. So, you know... All of us will sort of do certain things, like like Rich and the good dudes are going to do some stuff. You know, Paul's going to gas. Cook. Pressure of gas <laughs> tends to increase as the volume of the container decreases. All right, maybe I was that was the boil's law. It sounded. It sounds it important. Sounds good. That sounds good. You know, so you know, it's. Do you take over the whole boat? Yeah, so we have the oh, whole wow. boat, which is which is wild. So like, we have a whole bunch of like you know our athletes, you know from, you know obviously us three, and then you know you know so many people, and we'll. We're gonna we're gonna put pull up rigs on it. We got like all sorts of equipment. We'll have different classes going on throughout the throughout the day, but um, I think the the biggest thing is just we'll have classes, work out, have fun. But I mean, there's so many things to do. Like you can surf. There's, there's a, a movie theater. There's a movie theater. There's like this game show that. So like I wasn't able to take um you know go on the trip because it was like the week before the CrossFit Games. But Connor went, and there's this like they engage this like you fill up an auditorium. It's like a game show. But it's like they like make you do things. It's they said it was. He said it, Connor said it was the funnest thing he ever did sober, but he wasn't sober, so I didn't understand it. <laughs> but um, so whatever that means, it's like they do all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, there's like mini golf. There's wild stuff. There's, we go to a private island, and we're gonna do like a jogging for Frogman 5K, which is like a 5K in the, on the island for um, uh, like a. The, a Navy SEAL Foundation and all sorts oh, of cool know. stuff. We go to Nassau where we'll actually go to um like a CrossFit happy hour, which is, you know, and we'll be able to kind of throw barbells around because for obvious reasons, no barbells on the boat. But I think it's just going to be fun. And a lot of people are just like, they don't get to sort of interact with athletes other than watch them. So, you know, it's going to say no barbells, but tell people there's going to be heavy dumbbells. There's going to be sandbags. Like there's just no barbells. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, we, we have like 200 pound sandbags. So if you want to lift weight, just pick that thing up. Yeah, heavy, like everything except barbells we will have dumbbells sandbags med balls all that stuff the workouts yeah. will be legit yeah and like and the athletes are going to be coaching them we'll have like all workouts i'm going to make rich will just coach well he's going to coach a thousand person workout cool because he's good Bring like it. that when is it when is it it's after the, water it's after water so, so it's, you it's, go to water palooza you leave out of Wadapalooza. Yeah, because yeah, it's in the port of Miami. So you just go there you hit nassau you hit the uh, royal caribbean's private island and you're then you're at sea for two days Right on. Which is pretty awesome. Sounds like awesome. Name right. off a couple names here. So there so you have There's a lot. Yeah, you have you have, Me? you have Rich, Josh, Paul, Paul, Dan, Dan Bailey, China Cho, Jen Smith. Who else we got? Brooke Wells. Brooke Wells, James Hobart, Spe- Margo. Margo Alvarez. Spe- Margux? Yep. Spencer Hendel. <laughs> Chris Hinshaw is coming. Facundo, are you going? And that redhead from Canada. What's his name? Velner. 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 <laughs> where we were going with yeah, that. Vel- <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. That's not what I thought. <laughs> yeah, no, my, me neither. I was like, oh man, twisted. Um, and then uh, 
who else is yeah, like all sorts of like easy easy's easy, coming easy be there. So, yeah so it'll just be Craig a, Kenny Nation oh Craig Kenny oh wow oh yeah that, he may sink the boat he's I'm gonna, not going now. that's the that's the goal that's why we that's why he's on the boat uh, Ron Ortiz oh Ron Andy Big Sakamoto Ron. okay some masters Connor yeah. Murphy dancing the whole time yeah, that's why yeah yeah it's his value yeah so it'll be just this, a wild maniac time and but also like you know I know my wife's coming your wife's coming your wife's coming yep. you and your wife now you're <laughs> yeah. coming yeah we're coming. We'll bring you know, her. and then also like little things like I think a lot of it for like you know we'll we'll do podcasts and stuff talks about you know the the mayhem mindset whatever it might be like like we have we have the whole boat so we're gonna do all sorts of things like I know Eva Claire's gonna talk about nutrition all sorts of things so on a cruise on a cruise that's so, awesome yeah we took over like the whole kitchen so like we've changed like you have like we'll have we're gonna make all the healthy stuff but you also have all the crap too okay, that's easy good. I was Don't like worry. I ain't going and no, no. all the healthy no, stuff no no <laughs> no we knew you were coming so I made sure we kept the crap alright good yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but you know I, I pizza and wings yeah I made sure oh, there was gluten free options oh good yeah just good you know how gluten messes with my tummy it really messes <laughs> your with your tummy. tummy yeah like last time <laughs> you told me the pizza was gluten free and it wasn't I nope. appreciate it you're like my wife she hey. sliced me that brownie gluten free it is has Thanks. to be yeah but all right, that's an hour. You got anything else you want to say? No? You're just the best. You're the best. Look no. at you. You're, you're so best. dreamy. You're the best. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, boys. Appreciate you coming. Thanks for having me. First All Dudes podcast. Appreciate it. Thank you. Heck yeah. It's awesome. Uh, CrossFitMayhem.com, MayhemMindset.com. Peace.